David, we're just back from a really wonderful lecture that you shared with our Youth Ministry Now program on missional practices and theology with youth ministry. And uh, I, was, I was struck by your opening where you, where you shared that often the default mode for a youth minister is that there's kind of an unruly energy amongst adolescents that needs to be kind of constrained and governed with some classroom management techniques so that the youth minister can then do something productive with the youth. And on the other hand, sometimes the default mode for the youth minister is you've just got this inert lethargy of tired, somewhat reticent, uh, young people with you and it's up to the youth minister to pump energy into making something happen that will enliven the activity enough for it to be transformative. But you really wanted to drive home hard a different vision that actually young people are alive with energy, insight, critical capacities, passion, and to some extent the youth minister's job is to create space to facilitate that natural energy coming forward. Share with us the, your insight and some of the, the, the theological or scholarly warrants for it. <clears throat> well, uh, those of us who've worked with youth for any period of time uh, intuitively know that young people are creative, they're in, uh, imaginative, they're passionate, uh, they're compassionate. Uh, we, we know this about them. They, as G. Stanley Hall says, they uh, they represent this vernal season of the heart uh, where, the, where the person is, is alive to their feelings, their, their affect in the world. So we know that about young people. Um, youth ministry at its worst is, uh, is where we bring in uh, an agenda, a curriculum, a set of ideas that we want to teach or impose and leave no space uh, for, the, for the energies or the sensibilities or the passions of young people uh, to emerge. And so this is, uh, this is a problem, has been a problem in youth ministry, uh, you know, periodically, and I, and I think in m many of its contemporary versions of, versions of youth ministry uh, is, a, is a perpetual problem. Um, so what I'm interested in is uh, I, I've been inspired by folks like Jürgen Moltmann who talks about uh, who talks about this, the work of the Spirit as um, Ruach, this, uh, this uh, God breathing life into creation and uh, Spirit being not only what sustains life but what makes it want to be more, what makes it want to be fully what it was created to be. And so I, I have sensed in young people that a lot of their questioning, a lot of their uh, interests and commitments are in service of this yearning for more. And so it, it simply has seemed inappropriate to not allow space for them. And so part of my uh, doctoral research had to do with exploring more systematic approaches for not, not leaving youth to their own devices, but helping uh, elicit those energies, helping uh, you know, hear them, helping, uh, you know, them identify their own, uh, what, what pushes them past apathy, what makes them alive, what makes them uh, passionate, what makes them angry, sad, or, or disconnected. And so, uh, so as, as you suggested, I, I think, um, you know, it, it is a much more sustainable approach to youth ministry uh, because it doesn't rely solely on the youth minister to get the youth excited about this curriculum or get the, get the youth excited about this set of I ideas. But it is more conversational. The youth worker and the congregation uh, per se doesn't, ha there's, uh, there's a role for them to be in the conversation, but it, it relies on uh, that the vernal season of the heart that we that we sense in young people, and and we suspect that it is at least in part uh, the spirit speaking in and through young people. Uh, I use the, the the concept in our session, uh, Abraham Heschel's notion of the prophet. Uh, Heschel uh, understood the prophet as the one who stood in the force field between the wounds of the world and the broken heart of God. And for many years, I have intuitively talked about youth as prophetic. And his, historically, this is easy to document. 
uh, every modern movement, the peace movement or justice movement in modern history, young people have been at the forefront. Uh, so, so it just always seems appropriate that we, uh, you know, create approaches uh, for use in the church to allow young people to uh, give expression to these uh, leadings of the Spirit.